Lesson 10, I will use area models and the number line to compare decimal numbers. Today you're going to need this Lesson 10 template for the first couple of activities that we're going to do before we start on our problem set. On your area model template, I want you to shade your first area model to represent this decimal and the second area model to represent this de decimal number. So we're going to do 15 hundredths and 51 hundredths. So we've got 15 and we've got 51 hundredths. So first of all, how are we going to be able to represent these two decimals on these two area models? When I'm looking at this area model, it's divided into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 parts. So how am I going to be able to shade 15 hundredths when I only have 10? Well, I'm going to have to decompose these tenths into hundredths, right? So we're going to use our pencils and we're going to divide this area model into 10 parts horizontally. So I want you to go ahead and do that. I want you to pause the video and divide this into 10 parts horizontally. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and you divided both of your area models into 10 parts, you decompose them horizontally, so now you should have 10 tens, which is 100. Now we can shade 15 hundredths and 51 hundredths. So I'm going to use my highlighter so that we can see. Alright, so let's do 10. It's a little big, isn't it? Let's try that again. So let's do 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then in the other area model, we're going to shade 51. So we've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So half would be 50. And then I'm going to shade one more. So now I've got 51. So remember today our learning target is about comparing decimals. So I've got 15 hundredths and I've got 51 hundredths. How does the area model help you to compare? How will this model tell you which one's greater and which one's less? Well if you look at 15 hundredths you can obviously see that less has been shaded. So that would tell us that 15 hundredths is less than 51 hundredths. Okay, all right, we're going to try one more. All right, so this time we're going to shade in our area model 37 hundredths and 3 tenths. So I want you to go back to your template and I want you to shade 37 hundredths in your first area model and 3 tenths in your second area model. I want you to pause the video and come back when you are finished. Okay, hopefully you did as I asked and you shade it 37 hundredths and 3 tenths and it should look something like this. So you can, you can see that I did go ahead and decompose both of these into the hundredths. If you did not decompose this into hundredths, that's perfectly okay. You could have left this as tenths. So we've got 37 hundredths and we've got 3 tenths. So which one of these would be greater? Well, 37 hundredths would be 700 squared. You can see they both have 3 tenths, 1, 2, 3 tenths, and 1, 2, 3 tenths. So how would we write that? Well, we would write 37 hundredths is greater than 3 tenths, or 3 tenths is less than 37 hundredths. Okay, so let's practice this a little bit more in our problem set. And we're going to shade the area models below, decomposing tenths as needed to represent the pairs of decimal numbers, Fill in the blank with less than, greater than, or equal to to compare the decimal numbers. So we're going to be using area models to compare. So you're going to notice we're not just putting greater than and less than. We are justifying our answers here with these area models. This is one way we can do that. So the first one we're going to shade 23 hundredths. So because this is hundredths, I'm going to have to decompose this area model into hundredths. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's decompose. So I want you to do the same thing. Go ahead and make your area model show hundreds instead of tenths. You should be getting really good at decomposing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm about to go in here and make one more. And nine, ten. 
Okay, so now I have 10 parts and I'm ready to shade 23 hundredths. So I want you to go ahead and do that also. Let's shade, shade 23 hundredths. So I've got 10 hundredths. And the next column would be 20. And then I'm going to shade three more. So this would be 23 hundredths. And then let's shade four tenths of the other model. So do we have to decompose this? No, we do not. So we've got 10, 20, 30, 40. So we're going to shade four of these tens to make 40 or four tenths. And then we're going to compare. So just look at your two area models while I finish this shading. Is it going to be pretty obvious which one's greater than and which one's less than? Well, it's obvious by looking at how much that's shaded that there is less shaded in this model than there is over here. So that means that 23 hundredths is less than 4 tenths. That should have been a less than sign. Okay, so I want you to try to do the next one all by yourself. And I want you to go ahead and pause the video, shade both of your area models, and then I want you to come back and let's compare. So go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so let's take a look here. And you can see in the first area model, I shaded one, two, three, four, five, six tenths. In the second one, I had to decompose because these were hundredths, and I shaded 10, 20, 30, 8 hundredths. So by looking at the area model, you can tell which one has the most shaded? Well, 6 tenths has more shaded than 38 hundredths. So 6 tenths is greater than 38 hundredths. Okay, let's try the next one. So we've got 9 hundredths and we've got 9 tenths. I want you to pause the video and I want you to model both of these and then I want you to come back and I want you to compare them. I also want you to go ahead and do D. So we're going to go ahead and Shade 9 hundredths, 9 tenths, 70 hundredths, and 7 tenths, and then we're going to come back and compare. So pause the video and take care of that, please. Okay, so let's take a look at the first one. So you can see I decompose this one into hundredths, and I shade it 9 hundredths, and then over here I have 9 tenths. So which one did you think was greater? Well, 9 tenths, obviously, it's almost a whole, whereas 9 hundredths is barely even is almost zero, isn't it? So we would definitely have less than. So let's take a look at the next one. So I have 70 hundredths and 7 tenths. What did you notice about these two? Did you notice that you were shading the exact same amount? The only difference is, is this has been decomposed into smaller parts. So hopefully you put equal to on that one. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Now we're going to be plotting these numbers on a number line, and we're going to use this to compare. So this is another way that you can justify your answer. But in order to do this, you have to be careful to really understand what you're doing. So the first thing I want you to notice is that this number line is not your typical number line. We're used to seeing it go from whole number to whole number. And this number line does not. It goes from 10 to 10 and 3 tenths. So here is 10 and 1 tenth. Here is 10 and 2 tenths. So they've taken each of these tenths and divided them into 10 parts. So that means that each of these sections would have a value of what? Well, if you take a tenth and you decompose it into 10 parts, you are making hundredths. So each of these is a hundredth. So let's go ahead and label 10 and 3 hundredths and 10 and 3 tenths on our number line. So if this is 10 and 0 hundredths, then this would be 10 and 1 hundredth, 10 and 2 hundredths, and 10 and 3 hundredths. So let's go ahead and label that 10 and 3 hundredths. Now I'm going to label 10 and 3 tenths. So this is 10 and 1 tenth, 10 and 2 tenths, and 10 and 3 tenths is already labeled for us. So what do we know about number lines? As you're moving to the right on a number line, what is happening to the numbers? They are getting larger. So if 10 and 3 tenths is here, and 10, or excuse me, if 10 and 3 hundredths is here, and 10 and 3 tenths is here, we know 10 and 3 hundredths is less than 10 and 3 tenths. Okay, let's try another one. So we've got 12 and 68 hundredths and 12 and 8 tenths. When I look at 12 and 68 hundredths, I see it has 12 and 6 tenths. So that tells me it's going to be between 12 and 6 tenths and 12 and 7 tenths. So if I count over, this would be 12 and 60 hundredths, 12 and 61 hundredths, 
12 and 62 hundredths, 12 and 63 hundredths, 12 and 64 hundredths, 12 and 65 hundredths, 12 and 66 hundredths, 12 and 67 hundredths, 12 and 68 hundredths. So let's go ahead and label that. And then for 12 and 8 tenths, it's already labeled. All we have to do is just put a point. So now looking at your number line, what would you say here? Well, because 12 and 68 hundredths is before 12 and 8 tenths, then it is less than. All right, so now we're going to use the symbols greater than, less than, or equal to to compare. And you're going to notice it doesn't say justify your answer. So that means we can just put the symbols. So these are in the same units. We have 3 and 42 hundredths and 3 and 75 hundredths. So if I were to put these in a place value chart like this or right underneath each other lining up the decimals, you can see the whole numbers are the same. They are different in the tenths. And 4 tenths is less than 7 tenths, so 3 and 42 hundredths is less than 3 and 75 hundredths. Let's take a look at B. They are the same in the ones, but they are different in the tenths. This has two tenths, this has one tenth. So that means 4 and 21 hundredths is greater than 4 and 12 hundredths. All right, I want you to try to do C, D, E, and F by yourself. Pause the video, try the next four. Really try to think about them, don't just guess. Try to look at them and try to compare, and then let's come back and we'll talk it out. All right, so hopefully you did the next four all by yourself. I hope that when you did C, you notice that the ones place has a two in it and this has a three in it. So because this is two ones and this is three ones, this has to be less than. And then for D, I hope you notice that this is four ones and this is six ones. So four and four hundredths has to be less than six and two hundredths. And then let's look at E. So we have 12 in the ones place, or one in the tens place and two in the ones place, one in the tens place and two in the ones place, so they're the same. And then I have a t seven in the tens place and a seven in the tens place. And this zero has no value. So that means that these two decimals are equal. And then for F, they both have a one in the ones place, but nine tenths has a nine in the tens place and two, or excuse me, and the next one has a 2 in the tenths place. So 1 and 9 tenths is greater than 1 and 21 hundredths. Okay, let's keep moving. All right, so now we're going to use symbols less than or greater than or equal to compare. Use pictures as needed to solve. All right, so we're going to take a look at these, and you're going to notice that these are going to be just a little different because they are, they are not all in the same units. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to rewrite these so that they're easier for us to compare. So we've got 23 tenths. This is unit form. So let's rewrite this as a decimal. Now it's a little bit easier for us to compare. You can notice that this has a zero in the ones place and this has a two in the ones place. So this has to be less than. All right, let's rewrite this one and four tenths. So it would look like this, one and four tenths. So what do you think? Which ones is this less than, greater than, or equal to? Well, it would be less than because they are the same in the ones place, but look at the tens. This has a zero and this has a four in the tenths place. So one in four tenths is greater than one in four hundredths. Okay, so this is six and seven hundredths. This is six and seven hundredths tenths. Well, they're the same in the ones place, but what about the tenths place? This has a zero and this has a seven, so zero is less than seven. All right, so let's rewrite this 45 tenths. Hmm, this is an improper fraction, isn't it? So 45 tenths, if you remember for a couple lessons ago, 45 tenths is, is actually four and five tenths, four holes and five tenths. And this is 45 hundredths. So this would be less than. 
All right, let's try the next one. So I have 127 hundredths. So that would be 1 and 27 hundredths. So less than, greater than, or equal to. Where they're the same in the ones place, but look at the tenths. This would have to be less than. All right, so now I've got 6 tenths, 66 hundredths. So they're the same in the ones place. They're the same in the tenths place. But look in the hundredths place. This has nothing, so that's the same as zero, but this has six. So, because six is greater than zero, this would be less than. All right, so today we were comparing fractions that were in different units. First of all, you'll notice that when you put them in the same units, it makes them much easier to compare. We didn't use any pictures this time. We actually just used the decimals to compare them by looking at each place individually. Wow. 